Another aspect of quality, which I'm just going to review again, um, uh, especially for those that are here for the first time, has to do with inflammatory foods. See, all foods are not created equal. Some, some health professionals have said, and some, some uh, health societies have said, you know, just everything in moderation. You, you can really have anything you want, just keep it in moderation. I don't think the science supports that. Well, I, I know the science doesn't support that. And in fact, the Harvard Health Studies, the Harvard Health Professional Studies, in this case, we're looking at over 100,000 individuals, uh, have shown a very interesting differences in how foods affect inflammation. Now, when a food is inflammatory, it's going to dramatically increase our risk. It's going to increase the tendency for weight gain, it's go which further increases inflammation. It's going to increase the tendency for any autoimmune process to occur, because that in itself is inflammatory. It's going to increase any propensity we have for cancer, diabetes, heart disease, on and on and on. Why? Because inflammatory foods, like all other foods and chemicals in foods, will turn genes on or off. And inflammation turns genes in the wrong direction. It activates the disease-producing genes. So, real briefly, the Harvard University, in looking at its studies that were began in 1970s, are able to go back, when a new blood test is found, they go back and they draw a sample of that blood test that was taken 20, 30 years ago, and they're able to check it all through the years compared to the lifestyle characteristics that were meticulously filled out in these 20-page questionnaires that many of the participants filled out every two years. And so within just a matter of weeks, they were able to crunch all this data and find out what foods were most associated with very high inflammation. Okay, here's another opportunity for us to learn something about what is it that turns our genes off for good or for bad.